When I think nostalgia, one of my greatest memories comes from the music on the various menus in PS1 era racing games. Games like Ridge Racer Type 4, Gran Turismo 2, and even Japanese exclusives like Racing Lagoon. If you listen to something like the Racing Lagoon OST, you'll hear various genres in there. Anything from down tempo to uh, various areas of jazz, smooth jazz, jazz fusion, and even things like drum and bass, jungle, and deep house. Regardless of the specific genre, they all tend to evoke this surreal, laid back, cool jazz vibe so common with a lot of 90s electronic music. In this video, I want to break down how I made this down tempo track that you're hearing now with some cheesy smooth jazz elements baked into it. Sound sources are super important and for the period that these games came in, we need to use the same things they did. That means romplers like the JV1080 or even the late 90s Korg Triton, as well as things like general MIDI boxes are fantastic for that kind of ethereal, surreal rompler sound. And if you're starting with the right sounds and textures, you can then really focus on the songwriting portion and whatever style that you end up landing on. The first thing I want to take a look at here is the beat. And so for the beat here, it's actually a extremely simple pattern. It's basically just a kick, a snare, and a hi-hat. Right, and I guess the lesson here is keep things very simple. And it's almost very much a, a hip hop beat. So we have that kick, boom, boom, da, da, dum, dum, da, right? With a couple ghost kicks thrown in near the end of this. And then you can take a look at the hi-hat pattern here. A uh, little bit of, oh, we don't have any swing on here, but this is what the beat sounds like. Right, couple callouts here. One is just, you know, make use of that velocity. So you'll see on all these hi hats, snares, and kicks, I uh, have different velocity values on there. It just really helps with that groove and feel. And then again, just kind of reiterating that keep it simple part. Now, in terms of effects, we have a pretty big reverb on the snare in the hi hat. And the reason I did that big reverb or the big, yeah, the big reverb on the snare there is I wanted that like cheesy 80s uh, snare reverb sound. I just thought it matched this, uh, this type of song here. So that's what I did there. And then that's it. It's a very simple beat there. Uh, I'm not going to go over processing and, and things like that. Just really want to focus on arrangement for now. And so that's what we have for the beat. The next thing I want to look at are just all the various sounds and samples we have in here. Now, if you remember in the beginning of the video, about a minute and a half ago, I talked about how important it is to get the same sonic texture uh, from that time period, and that comes from the devices they use. So I decided to go all with the Korg Triton here for all my sounds. Uh, it did come out in 99, and some of these games came out before that, but it's the same es essence uh, in texture in these. So what we have first here is a Korg Triton playing a minor 11 chord. Very simple progression there, right? And if I pull open the Triton, I'm using the Wavetable EP program, uh, which is a fantastic sounding EP. Uh, it's under the keyboards in here, or you could just do a search for it. Uh, no modifications on that. Other thing I want to call out here is just velocity, especially things like EPs. Um, you know, playing around with that velocity is going to help with the feel. You know, the lower you play on the velocity, uh, I think the smoother those EPs can sound, and that's what I'm after here. So that's kind of the basic 
core and foundation of the song, right? This EP is repeating throughout the song. Now, the next thing you need is some type of cheesy lead uh, in these types of songs. And so, so many options here. Again, we're using the Korg Triton here for this lead. And let me just solo this. Right, really nice sound there out of the Korg Triton. That's the Bottle Bell. So it's in the Bell Mallet category. Super, super cheesy 90s. And this specific sound has a really nice gritty graininess to it naturally uh, right out of the Korg Triton. You can kind of hear that sizzle on it. Uh, so it just sounds great in the track. I have this set in mono and then sending it through a delay and very simple. And so if we stack that up with the EP, Okay, and the next thing we have in here is a soft pad that comes in through the middle of the song, just creating a little bit of bedding, filling in some gaps there, just true essence of a pad that is also from a Korg Triton playing the same chords as the EP up here, but without that little stutter step uh, before the, the chord change. So the soft pad sounds like this. very simple obviously that's coming from the Korg Triton as well and this is the warm pad preset I think I did make some changes on here uh, I think I just turned off the double oscillator to make it a little more simple uh, so it's just using a single oscillator but yeah same thing here um, actually it's not keeping it in stereo through a little bit of reverb and we have the volume way down again we want this to be a, a, truly a pad in the song so kind of sitting back and then if we stack these things up, sounds like this. All right, so again, just filling in space, you know, soft pads, very subtle, um, so good for songs like this. Next thing we have is a trombone near the end here. So another bit of almost a lead type element uh, very like emotional in some sense when it comes in and that sounds like this. And that's it, All right? So that comes in, it's playing along with the EP there that is in mono then through a delay also using a Korg Triton, and it's the Trombone Soft program out of the brass category. So again, like going back to composing these types of songs, you know, really I think about all the elements that may be in like a smooth jazz track, and I try to incorporate those, but instead of using real instruments, you know, you use these cheesy romplers, and you get these kind of just cheesy sounding trombones, right? Like it kind of sounds like a real one, but you can tell like something slightly off with it. It's a little, little goofy sounding, but that's where we go back to, you know, using the sounds from that time period uh, is so important. So if we layer in some of these items, the EP, the soft pad and the trombone, that's what we get. Next thing we have down here is a little bit of a slow synth sound. So this is in mono going through a, a bit of a delay also out of the Korg Triton. Sounds like this. So also playing along in the same key as the EP, following that same chord change. Well, actually it's not, it's going up uh, an octave there, but you know, either way, this is just introducing more sound. It very much sounds like a string. Strings are great for introducing emotion. And then with this type of patch out of the rompler, you'll hear it has that sparkle and sizzle on the top. So it's like a string uh, with some extra motion on it, which 
the Korg Romplers were great. They killed it when it came to these types of motion-based sounds. So when we stack that up, Final thing we have down here sound-wise is what I call the air string here. Also out of the Korg Triton, super, super cheesy PS1 era sound. It sounds like this. And so if we pull this bad boy open, this is the Ether Voices patch out of the Korg Triton. It is under the vocal airy category, and that's exactly what it sounds like. So these airy, voicey type patches to me, whenever I hear these, I just instantly think, you know, 1997 PlayStation era. So if we stack that up. And that's what we get. Now, a couple other things I want to call out here just on the effects side. Um, this is where the sample pack portion of things come into play, right? So a lot of these composers and producers from this time period would have also used sample packs for whether it be pad sounds, drums, but even just random one shots. And so you'll see I have a few one shots in here just dragged into a track all in mono through a delay, a little bit of filter to just control the brightness. And here are some of those sounds. So just a little bit of a cash register sound, and then we copied it and reversed it. We also have this. And then I believe, yeah, a little bit of a, a finger symbol there. And those are the sounds we have. So we just stack them up, try to find a good spot for them in the song. You know, it's always good to think about the effects as just incidentals, the candy on top, uh, just a great way to introduce, you know, some new elements in a song that may otherwise be a little, a little static. So always play around with those effects, super important for just general atmosphere. Last thing I want to look at here is the bass, also coming out of the Korg Triton in mono, a little bit of compression, a uh, little bit of track space around there just to try to get it to sit well in the mix. Sounds like this. And that's it for the bass. If I open the Triton here, this is the warm bass and ride. So you probably heard it there. Each time that bass note is hit, there's also a ride cymbal uh, sounding with that. So we'll see it's a two oscillator patch here. That slap bass sound is on one, and then two is just a little ride cymbal. Um, I thought it was interesting. I thought it actually played along well with the song. So you get the bass there and then the cymbal on each hit. Uh, for some reason, I just thought it sat well there. So if we stack that with the drums, this is what we get. And that's kind of it, folks.